Okay, it's a very, very windy holiday memorial weekend, May the 29th, and I'm going to take the opportunity to go ahead and do the break-in run on an FA, a Sato FA 100 GK, that's Golden Knight. We're going to go through it from taking it out of the box and getting it set up. So, it's going to be out here on a test stand. I'm going to use a... Uh, JTEC motor stand and you just set this up so I can do a break in. Real quickly when you take the engine out of the box you'll have a manual, a muffler, a set of tools, Allen wrenches and an, uh, a hex wrench and the motor itself. Okay I've gone ahead and set up the motor for the first testing. I'm using a 14.7 three-bladed master air screw prop. This is what I'm going to use. The motor is supposed to go on a Corsair 60, Hangar 9 Corsair 60. All ready to fuel it up. I have replaced the stock glow plug with an OS Type F. Uh, everything else on here is just the way it came out of the box. The fuel is Omega, 25% nitro. Um, we're going to open up the high-speed needle five turns. That's per the manual. Now I'm going to prime the engine. Don't have the glow starter on. I'm going to turn it through so I can get fuel up into the engine. I'll be holding the muffler tip to get some pressure. I'm going to use an electric starter on it initially. It may take a little bit to get it started. I'm going to be using a glow bead tachometer. It's basically essential for all four stroke engines. We want to keep the first 10 minutes of this under about 4,000 RPM for the manual. Just a few clips of the propeller got the motor started. We're going to leave the we're going to leave the glow starter on because it's going to be running very very rich for this initial run. And I'm starting a stopwatch. We're going to run it for 10 minutes, uh, running at RPMs below 4,000. Okay, we're just coming up on uh, six and a half minutes. And that tank of fuel is pretty much gone, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, terminate the run. And uh, you can see by the fuel around there, this is running slobber and rich. Currently, the RPMs that we were running was 3,600. Okay, this will be the second start.
Okay, it's uh, running at 3,600 RPM right now. Example of how rich this thing is running, I'm showing you the vent tube and uh, just got fuel just spraying out of that thing. So it's very, very, very rich. All right, so the extra three and a half minutes is up. So now we've run 10 minutes. I'm going to lean it out. for this tank in probably another five minutes. Okay, we're ending uh, the second 10 minute cycle now. And I uh, just measured the head temperature at 97 degrees, so it's running very, very cool. And I'm gonna lean it out a little more now. Okay, it's now running 9,400 RPM at wide open. Uh, that's about, uh, that's, well, it's actually peaking out at 96, 97, and I've tuned it back down to 9,400 RPM at wide open. This is uh, backing it off, so it has a, a little bit of extra coolness, and all the fuel flow that was bypassing through the crank crankcase is now stopped, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and let it run through this tank and probably one more. This is going to be the last tank that I'm going to run on this before uh, it's getting mounted on the plane and run. The uh, manual says that 40 minutes is considered uh, normal break-in period. I usually don't go quite that far. I make sure that I've got it all leaned out, transition is good, and uh, usually about 30 minutes is what I use to break in. Uh, one of the pros of setting this stuff up and breaking it in on a on a test stand is during the initial runs it makes a mess out of everything fuel everywhere so uh, if you do this before you mount it in your plane you'll save yourself a lot of mess uh, in cleaning up plane on the initial runs so for me that's that's worth it so I'm going to start it up again and run it then I will uh, do some transition checks and if necessary I'll go ahead and tune the low end
is, is a big puff of white smoke when I go transition to high, and that usually means that it's uh, a bit rich on the low end. So I'm going to lean this out a little. One of the things that's pretty important when you're turning that low speed needle is to move in very small increments because it's easy to get where you transition past where you need to be. Okay, that's still a little rich. The big puff of smoke that's coming out tells me it's rich. If it, uh, if I get past and get it on the lean side, what it'll do is it'll just stutter down and try to die. Okay, that's better, but I think it still uh, needs to go down some more. I spent quite a bit of time working on the low speed needle now, and pretty happy with it. It's just a pat on the rich side right now, and I can uh, make it idle at a very reliable slow idle. Letting it idle for uh, a few seconds. We'll go ahead and pull it to full throttle. So I had a very instantaneous response and uh, revved up the high speed fairly quickly. Need a little more tweaking as I go along, but for right now it's in pretty good shape, I think.